guys! Thanks for sticking with me through that holiday break. I took a couple weeks off to spend some time with family and relax, and now I'm back with some videos! As a colorectal cancer survivor that had an ileostomy, which was reversed, um, I get a lot of questions all the time about what I eat and what I take to help control my bowels uh, and to keep the toilet from ruling my life. And it's really hard for me to describe to people what exactly I do, so I thought that doing a vlog and taking you guys with me for a week to show you exactly what I eat and what I take would be the best way to give you a sense of the bigger picture of things. So here we are! If you're new here, welcome to Life as a Cancer Survivor! This channel will give you all the ups and the downs of what life is like after you hear those words, you have cancer. My name is Jelena, and in May of 2016, I was diagnosed with stage 3 rectal cancer. If you are new, please make sure you hit the subscribe button down in the corner or right underneath the video. I also have the link in the description so that you'll be notified when all of my new videos are uploaded. First, if you're unsure what an ileostomy is, let me give you a brief explanation. So it's basically when part of your small intestine is run out of your abdominal wall and you wear a bag over it to collect your waste. So basically you're pooping out of your stomach instead of your butt. Not using your full digestive system for months and having part of that digestive system cut out and sewn back together, it just wreaks havoc on the system. So that ileostomy reversal surgery is when they just tuck that small intestine back in. That's when a lot of people start having issues with digestion and with their bowel movements. I'll provide a more in-depth explanation and show you pictures of uh, more of what exactly they are uh, in a future video, so stay tuned for that in a couple of weeks. Doctors don't even fully understand how to solve these digestive issues, so as patients we do a lot of trial and error trying to figure out how to solve and make our bowels a little bit more controllable. I also want to say that I only got two diet tips from my surgeon after my ileostomy reversal surgery. One was to just go back to eating like normal immediately after I got home from the hospital, including a very high fiber diet. Then two and a half weeks later at my follow-up appointment with my surgeon, he said that I could start taking Metamucil and Imodium to help control my bowels, but didn't give me any kind of tips as to how to take them. And that was it. Did you get better advice from your surgeon? If so, let me know in the comments below any good tips that you got to help out fellow survivors. This fall I went in to see a gastroenterologist that specializes in both women's digestive issues and colorectal cancer survivors. Um, I went to the GI doc based on a recommendation from the therapist that I was seeing, um, which I was seeing her because of anxiety issues that I was having because of my cancer diagnosis. Now I want to emphasize that all of our digestive systems are different, so what works for me may not work for someone else, but this could be a starting point of some new ideas for you to discuss with your doctor to try. I've been experimenting with different solutions to regulate my digestive system for the last two and a half years, and it seems like whenever I would find a solution, it would work for a couple of weeks, maybe a month or two, but then my digestive system, it would get used to it and be like, Nah, I don't want that to work anymore, and then just throw fits and I would have to find a new solution. I've been doing this current routine since the end of August, and it's now January. So this might be a long-term solution for me. It's been working well for the most part. The holidays didn't even throw things off very much. Um, and then the only thing that I don't really show in the video is that I always have water with me, so I'm drinking a ton of water all day. But otherwise, I've tried to show everything in there. I may have forgotten um, a couple of times, like my nighttime pills. I may have, I didn't videotape those every evening, but those are taken daily. At the end of each day, I'll have a calendar pop up that'll show you a summary of what I ate for the day, and I'll just keep adding to that as the days go on throughout the video. So keep an eye out for that. So here we go. Here's what I ate for the week.
Yesterday, I had that CT scan and did the barium smoothie, which cleansed me out. So, um, I have not pooped yet today. But seeing as how much I went yesterday morning after those smoothies, not a huge surprise. So, I have been gassy and it's been pretty smelly. Uh, but nothing solid yet. But for dinner, I want to show you what I'm having for dinner. Um, and you might think that I am crazy. Uh, because for dinner, chili, yes, that's black beans, uh, kidney beans, and corn, and then uh, this is uh, some focaccia bread that's got parmesan and tomato on it. So this chili, it should be okay for one day. I can't eat this two days in a row, otherwise I will have another one of those colon cleansing episodes. But I'll keep you posted and let you know how tomorrow goes and if corn and beans are just coming straight out of me. guys it is bedtime um, I usually shower at night and I don't know what is going on with my little swoopy hair here I just let my hair air dry but anyway I wanted to go over my bedtime pill routine because that could have an effect on my bowel habits um, as well um, these first two I don't think because I've been all over the place and I've been on these um, basically well I guess a little after my reversal um, so those are the two pills that I'm on for at least the next 10 years are because I went into menopause from treatment. So artificially going into menopause in your 30s puts you, puts you at a higher risk for heart attacks, um, osteoporosis, and um, I mean just going through menopause you get a ton of hot flashes, which I totally was getting. So I'm on 100 milligrams of progesterone. 
and one milligram of estradiol. I don't know. So both of those, they're hormone replacements basically. Then starting in June of this year, I started taking acetylopram, 20 milligrams. Um, I started having anxiety attacks and so because I was having issues with that, they put me on meds so that I was not having daily panic attacks. And because I was having trouble sleeping once those um, attacks started, I'm also on 50 milligrams of trazodone nightly. Um, but I have cut them in half. I don't know if you can tell that. So I'm only taking half of a pill each night now. Um, trying to get myself off of that because I'm just like constantly feeling tired and it's really hard for me to stay awake when I drive more than 20 minutes, which is bad when I have to shuttle my daughter all over town for practices. So I'm hoping in the next maybe week or two, I don't know, or by the new year, I'll be able to get off of the sleeping meds. And then also after the new year, I'll talk with my doctor um, about starting to wean me off the acetylopram for my anxiety. And since it's been under control, since I have adjusted to that med. So just wanted to talk to you about those real quick because those could, side effects are, you know, different things with your bowels. So those could also have an effect on how often and how, the consistency of all that of my bowel movements. So I'll see you tomorrow morning for breakfast. I forgot that I also take vitamin D every day. Uh, I had a vitamin D deficiency before I even started cancer treatment. So this is one thing that I did already take before all of this went down. So um, I take 5,000 IUs every day and that gets me to the level that I need to be at. So two of these little the ones I have are teeny tiny. So here they go. So my tummy has been kind of off and on crampy today, so not too bad, but whenever it kind of starts feeling like that, I like to drink some kombucha.
once you've had a glimpse into what I eat over the course of a week, I want to briefly elaborate on a few of the things that you saw in the video. The first one I want to talk about is the psyllium husk. I would always take it first thing in the morning no matter what time I woke up, but I finally realized that if I take it any earlier than 6 a.m., it ends up giving me diarrhea. But if I take it after 6 a.m., it bulks up my stools, which is what I want it to do. So on the days that I have to wake up at 5.30 a.m. to take my daughter to the skating rink for practice, I just focus on getting myself hydrated and drink a bunch of water first thing. And then when we get home, I take the psyllium husk and it's usually around 8, 8.30 when I'm taking it. After taking the psyllium husk, I limit my liquid intake for that first hour to make sure that the husk gets into my digestive system and bulks up what's in there and doesn't work as a laxative. After an hour, I'll drink my coffee, and then after two hours, that's when it's okay to start taking medications. So that's when I will take my one Imodium tablet. The high potency probiotic was recommended to me by my GI doc. She was also the one that recommended I increase my daily Imodium intake from one tablet to two tablets, one in the morning and one in the evening every day. That change has both helped to regulate me and has decreased the amount of gas that I have and even the potency of my gas. I haven't been back in to see how long that I'll need to take those high potency probiotics, but after I finished the first bottle and I tried just stopping them, my gas did increase and my stools loosened up some. So at least for the near future, I'll continue to take those. I also wanna briefly mention that the kombucha, I only do it every so often. I'm not drinking it every day. Uh, I get stomach cramping occasionally, usually maybe like, once or twice every month or two, so it's not often, but when I do, drinking the kombucha on the day that the cramping starts and then continuing for a few days helps to relieve it and kind of regulate things again. It's been two and a half years since I had my ileostomy reversed, and I've gone from going to the bathroom 20 plus times a day right after surgery to anywhere from one to three times a day now. So I'm pretty happy with where I am at the moment. I still have some bad days occasionally, but I'm feeling like I really have things under control a little bit more, and this is kind of the best spot that I've been in right now in the past two and a half years. Don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions. You can comment below or on my About page. You can find my email address and you can reach out to me if you have any um, qu other questions that you'd rather not discuss in public uh, since Bowel questions can be a little bit of a touchy subject, a little taboo to some people. Not to me, obviously, since I'm talking to you guys about it, but others may not want to publicize their issues that they're having. Next week, I'll be talking about all the preparation that went into getting ready for my lower anterior resection surgery, also known as LAR surgery. Please click on the like button if you enjoyed this video, and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of my future videos. I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next week.